So in this video, we're taking a look at Illustrator, Photoshop and Stable Diffusion and comparing some of the generative AI features. Now we're going to start off here in Illustrator and we're looking at a couple of kawaii kittens and look at the colors, look at the composition, look at the structure. The simple request here was to create kawaii kitten smiling high quality vector style rainbow background stars and planets color splash furniture. Now the furniture was supposed to be color splash. We don't have much of that going on, but we do have some color splash going on here. So it's largely interpreted the prompt as I wanted. This is a vector image, so we can edit it even now as it stands and it creates multiple images, most of them pretty decent. Now, Illustrator is extremely capable. This is the beta version of generative AI inside of inside of Illustrator. And if we take a look at another one, all of these images here have got one thing in common and um, maybe I'll let you guess. And if we take a look at this one here, what do you think is going on here? Well, I can tell you now we're at 50% magnification. That means we're halfway through the uh, total image size. This image is 4K. In fact, all of the images that you can see here are 4K. Illustrator is not only capable of creating scenes like this, the one that you see here, it's also capable of text. And that's something I found out quite by accident when it suddenly produced some text when I type something in. It's able to produce numbers like this design here and it's able to produce complex designs like the ones that you see here. And we can also see a much less complex but fairly compelling design uh, over here. So it is very competent and like I say, this is the beta version. So with this girl, what do we have? Beautiful woman's face, African face paint, intense color powder style. And it's given us this interesting style with the uh, with the kind of powdery effect at the end. This is a subject, so it's not a scene. Let me click on the tool there. We can move this and we can move it to one of the other 4K artboards. It's pretty amazing. We can go ahead and look at another one. So that's one. that one is a beautiful woman's face, African face paint, intense color splash. So you can see the color splash, the way it responds to the prompt. This is another one that I did. I really like this one. I really like the results on this one. So uh, I don't know what to say. It is really powerful and it is beta. It can do text. It can do subjects. It can do backgrounds. This is a background here and this is one of many. When you're looking at these 4K images, how long do you think it takes to produce these? On this computer, mm, 20 seconds for each image, so about a minute for each three images. Really, really impressive uh, performance. Uh, let's go to this image here. We've got a couple. Let me select that. We've got a couple who are hugging each other. This is something which in Stable Diffusion, trying to get the elements of an image to interact, it's pretty difficult. It produces sometimes kind of uh, nonsensical results. Here we've got uh, a man hugging woman, high quality vector style, rainbow background, stars and planets. We can see the stars and planets in the background. They look pretty good. They're not too regular, not too uh, fancy. We've got some stars in the foreground, which is something I've noticed that it does do. Uh, sometimes it overextends what you ask it to do. We've got the man and the woman clearly happy and the a few too many fingers, that's something which you get also with stable diffusion and occasionally also with Photoshop. But otherwise, it kind of understands the compositional element. I want these two people hugging. This is something sometimes stable diffusion struggles with. Now, probably my favorite image, it was this image here, which it, it's an image of a child. And um, I really like the colors, the composition, the way you put everything together. One of the things I need to tell you guys. So I have a brand new course, Adobe Illustrator, Firefly, Generative AI Vector Graphics. Brand new course on Udemy. It covers everything that you need to know about the generative AI features inside of, of Illustrator. And you've got uh, an introduction. It allows you to do everything that we can so far do with with uh, with generative AI 
in Illustrator. And with this particular course, you can start off from scratch. You don't need to know anything at all about Illustrator. So it can take you from scratch to someone who understands how to get the sort of designs you've been looking at. And some of the designs are pretty, pretty impressive. Remember, it is in beta, so we'll be coming out of beta within the next several weeks, maybe months. And uh, I think it's going to be extremely powerful. Now, even before generative AI inside of Illustrator, we had generative AI inside of Photoshop. You can see here we've got a design which I was working on. Let me go ahead and remove the uh, some of the compositions that I created. We've got a woman holding a coffee cup. Initially, I asked it to rework that coffee cup and you can see it did that there. We can go ahead and look at some of the compositions that it came up with. Uh, not always coming up with the right number of fingers, but generally speaking, doing a reasonably good job. Starbucks coffee was the prompt there. Something a bit more adventurous and some of the results here are pretty impressive. We have a prompt holding a hamster, cute cartoonish. So you don't need to be an expert in putting down prompts in Photoshop and in Illustrator. Uh, it's a bit of a skill. You kind of learn it as you go along. With this one here, <laughs> the hamster has got completely black eyes. And uh, otherwise, it looks like a realistic hamster. There were a couple of other designs, maybe not quite uh, as sexy or as successful. One really impressive thing about Photoshop's generative AI, it is now in the sec, it, they now have got a second model. This is the second edition. They now have three models, the vector model for Illustrator, the photo model or the image model for Photoshop, and they have another model for templates, which I think has to do with some competition they have with companies like Canva. But you can see here, uh, very simply, it's taken this coffee coffee cup and turned it, it turned it into a meaningful image, a realistic image of a woman holding a hamster. The hand holding the hamster is also realistic. Now, this is fairly impressive. Uh, I tried to do something a bit more surreal. It's not that impressive to do someone holding a hamster. I tried to do something a bit more a bit more challenging and here we got I'm trying not to try not to uh, cherry pick the images here but it, it's almost impossible to completely avoid cherry picking the images this is an image that we got from a prompt small fox award-winning photography and you can see it perfectly placed a, a fox on this table here uh, pri previously I was trying to tell it to create a miniature fox and the results I was getting weren't <laughs> <laughs> necessarily very good and you can see there they just don't look realistic something a bit more straightforward asking it to create a mobile phone it just ended up creating an iPad and uh, the results were not really convincing and you can almost tell that they're very low resolution they just don't fit into the rest of the image when we take a look at this image here I got one really interesting result where we were trying to create a fox uh, inside of this landscape. The landscape itself, let's go ahead and just look at it like that. It's a snowy landscape. Create me a snow fox and this was probably the best one that we got. We can take a look at some of the other ones. That is uh, maybe a bit more of a wolf looking creature. The images are all blended in. They, they blend in to some extent. It's trying to create some sunlight reflected and uh, this one actually looks pretty good. This one looks like a fox, but as we zoom in, you can see these images, they are low resolution, even compared to this not very sharp image in the background. Um, the leg doesn't seem perfectly straight. When we take a look at the next one, uh, this one is even more unimpressive I wanted to create an image which was based on this image here now you can extend the image using generative fill in Photoshop and uh, we start off with this image we use a bit of generative fill you can see as we zoom in if I just zoom in you can see it's low quality uh, you can see it's low quality at the edges this is a small 1200 pixel image the results they are convincing if you don't look very closely 
of course we've got to add something of a mech warrior we've got to try something a bit more inventive the mech warriors not very successful they blend in they look as though they belong to to this image but not the best this simply doesn't compare with the kind of things that i see inside of uh, stable diffusion now a beautiful woman let's see what the prompt is Medi Med medieval florence taking selfie and the, the results are pretty gruesome. We've got this woman here, uh, another woman, they're all taking selfies and they, they all look pretty gruesome. Uh, I did go in for a fantasy description as well. So with this one, alien planet, city size spaceship, man in a space spacesuit looks on. Hmm? That looks pretty interesting. We've got this really bizarre one where the robot is looking backwards. Uh, another one. The planets never look quite round or quite convincing. The detail isn't perfect. Um, mysterious towers on an alien planet. These images, they are at 100% resolution. This is about as good as it gets with the current model, the, the imaging model, the vector imaging model number two. So really this one I felt was the best one. It did a reasonably good job there. We are inside of Stable Diffusion using Comfy UI, Stable Diffusion. The models I'm using here are Stable Diffusion 1.5. Now we are working with the same prompt that I used inside of Photoshop. Beautiful woman, medieval Florence taking selfie. Now the prompts there are uh, intended to basically create exactly the same type of uh, result that I was working with inside of uh, Photoshop but you can see here we've got the negative prompts so we can say the things that we don't want to see and we've got some nonsense negative prompts there that probably could work on those a little bit more um, and you can see some other stuff I was working on now with these ones what do we get we get a single image with stable diffusion 1.5 it is limited to uh, about 512 by 512 because with stable diffusion it is a it's open source i'm using a model here i'm actually using this model which is provided by someone civet ai and uh, i'm also using another model and another bunch of models here which are contributed by a chinese company i think tencent uh, contributed these ones it's open source so you've got stability ai producing the main uh, software that we're working with then you have other people generating other models that we can use comfy ui did not exist for the first six months that Sta stable diffusion existed it's, it's a re relatively new uh, invention and it's very good at allowing you fairly precise control over how you create and use images you can see here the results that we got uh, if i zoom in they are much better than the ones inside of Photoshop uh, same prompt and how is that we'll, well what we're doing here is we're using two photographs we're using this image here and saying create me a woman that looks something like this and then we're using a second image this is an image probably got it from Adobe stock this one is Florence so I'm saying use this image and then combine it with this image it gives us this ability to control the output so we now have a couple of women inside of a medieval Florence they look exactly this is what I was looking for with a prompt I was looking for women in Florence taking a selfie not modern women but women in medieval Florence that was the intention uh, even though the images are fairly small we can boost the size so this is the first uh, iteration we can then boost the size and create a much larger image size this is using some of the other models contributed by other uh, specialists in the uh, open source community now this is stable diffusion 1.5 and i can increase the size from what 512 by 512 using uh, various techniques to a point where it's as large as the images that we were working with inside of photoshop and if i wanted to go even larger it's possible for me to do that now photoshop gives me several images every every minute or so i can create uh several of these images scale them up if I want to inside of this software about one group of these images every minute so in terms of the speed of processing it's about equivalent to Photoshop I do need a more powerful graphics processor 
but I don't have everything going off to Adobe uh, to be processed on their servers. The images can be quite a lot larger. And if I was to move to Stable Diffusion SDXL, the one that came out this summer, it can produce images that are much larger than this, much, much larger. Uh, it can produce images as a starting point that are 1024 by 1024. Now, I do have Stable Diffusion courses, of course, and uh, on one of my courses, we discuss how to use Comfy UI to create images that are large landscape images, even very large portrait. And that's something which we discuss a bit later on, not with this particular course, a bit later on in another course. I'll have a link to this course. You can actually join it using the link in the description at a significant discount uh, and the same for the Illustrator course as well. Now, Adobe's technology is improving at a rate of knots. It's improving very rapidly and I'm not sure if they're, if they're going to catch up with Stable Diffusion, but one of the benefits is that right now they do offer guarantees. They do offer support for people using their software so that if you get copyright infringement claims, they will actually support you. But there are some negatives. So the uh, Illustrator features that we were looking at, they're still in beta, so we can't actually use them commercially. That will take a bit of time. And they also say there's a whole bunch of things that we cannot do inside of their software. We can't do things that are explicit and so on. Some people do need to work on things that are very graphic. You cannot do that. So there are limitations, but some advantages. And there are also some legal questions over Stable Diffusion. Is it actually allowed to use the material that it's sourced online to create its models, the original models. That sort of question is live right now. And it's something which is being discussed in the courts. Uh, Stable Diffusion obviously would say that they have got the ability to use content on the basis of fair use. And June 1, 2023, Getty asked London court to stop UK sales of Stability AI system. They have got a challenge to Stability AI and they're saying, no, you cannot use our material in your database. You cannot use it in your model. But a few months later, we've got Photogiant Getty took a leading AI image court maker to court. Now is also embracing the technology. They are also getting involved in the artificial intelligence generative AI business. But this thing is going to continue. We'll see what happens in the court cases. We'll see how good uh, Adobe's claim that it can protect users and users uh, against copyright infringement actually is. But right now, it's a very exciting area. And all the legal stuff aside, I have to say, I think Stable Diffusion has got some really, really strong points. And with SDXL, which we're still learning how to use, it is really, really powerful. Uh, competition is good, of course, for the end user, and we want Photoshop to continue. Uh, their model is a little bit different. I'm not sure that I prefer the Photoshop one. I hardly use it. Illustrator is pretty amazing, and their AI is... I've used Adobe software for a long time, and the AI in Illustrator is like nothing I've seen before, right from scratch, right from start. It's really impressive. So that's the uh, situation at the moment. Um, I have got a comparison between Photoshop and Krita, which looks at how those two different uh, apps implement some of the same types of features, one using Stable Diffusion, one using uh, Photoshop's previous model, the Generation 1 model. Uh, I'll have a link to that video in the description if you want to see that. Um, but yeah, maybe we'll catch up with all of this news sometime later on.